Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to DIY your own Christmas stocking. You can use all sorts of different prints and wonderful fabrics, so have fun with this one. And this one also has a faux fur cuff, so let's get started. So here is what you're going to need. You're going to need some fusible fleece, your front outer fabric, your back outer fabric, your lining fabric, an iron, some faux fur, some pins or clips, a lint roller because uh, working with faux fur is very messy and you're gonna wish you had it if you don't have it, or vacuum, a rotary cutter or some scissors, either or, and some matching thread. That's it. And a sewing machine. Yep, that too. Side note, if you don't have fusible fleece, you can also use batting. So this is the stocking pattern that I used. I just sketched it from memory, but if you have an old stocking, you can trace around that. Or I'm sure you can go on Google Images and find one to print out, but I'll give you the dimensions of mine so that you can make one close to my size if you'd like. So across the top of the stocking is about 7 inches or 18 centimeters. Across right above where the foot starts is about 6.5 inches or 16.5 centimeters. From the top of the stocking to about the top of the heel is about 8 inches or 20 centimeters. From the top of the stocking to the lowest point of the foot is about 14.5 inches or 36.5 centimeters. And from the top of the heel to about the tip of the foot is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters. You're going to use this pattern to cut out two outer pieces. Now that's one of the front fabric and the back fabric. You're also going to cut out two lining pieces and two fusible fleece pieces or batting. This says stocking fur cuff, but I actually use this whenever I make any cuff, whether it's faux fur or regular cotton fabric. And this is just a rectangle of 7 by 3 and 3 quarter inches or 18 by 9 and a half centimeters. This is just a personal preference, but whenever I make a fur cuff, I like to put the fur on both the front and back of the stocking. But when I make a cotton cuff, I only put it on the front of the stocking rather than just the back. So here's an example. You see the cuff is on the front of the stocking, but on the back it isn't. And you can see here, I have the fur on both the front and the back. And this is the stocking loop piece. This is a rectangle of five and a half inches by three inches or 14 centimeters by seven and a half centimeters. I like to cut this out using a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire stocking except for at the very top. I cut right against the pattern piece. So now that I'm going to cut the back outer piece, I'm going to flip the pattern around so that it resembles, you know, flipping the stocking around because if you cut it out the same way that you just cut the front piece, you're going to have like two front pieces rather than a front and a back piece. So make sure you flip it around. Sometimes I like cutting the loop piece out of the front outer fabric and sometimes I use the back outer fabric but for this stocking I'm going to be using the back outer fabric. For the lining and the fusible fleece, you're going to do the same thing except for you're going to cut on two layers because you need two pieces of each. There are better ways to cut fur that will result in less of a mess, uh, but this way is quicker even though it causes more mess. But I fold the full fur onto itself so that I'm cutting on to two layers because I want a cuff on the front and the back of the stocking. 
For the top and bottom of the cuff, I cut right along the pattern piece, but on the sides, I add about a half inch seam allowance on both sides. You want the extra fur on the sides to ensure that it catches when you go to sew along the perimeter of the stocking. This is where the lint roller comes in handy. We're finally going to start sewing, so you're going to fold the loop piece right sides together onto itself, and then sew along the raw edge with about a half inch seam allowance, or I just like to butt the edge of the presser foot against the raw edge. You can snip off the excess seam allowance. So now we're going to turn the loop right side out and I'm just putting a safety pin inside and then pushing the safety pin all the way through. Now you're going to press the loop with the seam in the middle so that when it's all pressed out we fold it in half and then the seam is hidden and you don't see it. It's time to fuse the fusible fleece to the front and back outer pieces. Now, this is one-sided fusible fleece, so on one side of it, it is soft and nice, and on the other side, it's a bit uh, rougher. It has a rougher texture, and this is the side that bonds with the fabric. So you're going to place the fabric wrong side up, and the fusible fleece with the rough side touching the fabric because that's the side that you want to bond to the fabric. So the soft side of the fleece is facing up. I'm gonna flip the whole thing over because you need to fuse from the fabric side, not the fleece side. And hit it with an iron. Do the same thing to the other outer piece. Time to attach the fur. So basically we're going to put the outer pieces and the fur right sides together and sew along the top of the fur so that when we flip it up, the top of the fur meets or surpasses the top of the stocking. First I just eyeball where I think the fur should go and then I place pins exactly where I would stitch so that when I fold the fur back up I can see if it at least meets the top of the stocking. And as you can see here the fur just surpasses the top of the stocking so the placement of the fur is good. When you found the right placement go ahead and move the pins down just so that they're out of the way when you're ready to sew. Don't move the fur just move the pins out of the way. Also, I usually sew the fur on it with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Do the same for the other outer piece. Stitch across the top of the fur with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you're going to attach the outer pieces to the lining pieces. I always start with the back piece that has the loop. Place the loop about an inch in from the edge and then place the back piece right sides together with the lining piece. Make sure the fur is pulled all the way up to the top of the stocking and then pin everything in place making sure to catch the loop. Sew along the edge of the stocking with a half inch seam allowance or again I just like to butt the edge of the presser foot along the edge of the stocking. When you get to the loop part, back stitch over it and then continue stitching forward just to reinforce it. Clip off the excess loop and fur at the top but not on the sides. Open up the front and back pieces and place them right sides together. 
pin or clip them and then sew around the entire perimeter of the stocking minus about a two inch gap at the bottom of the lining. Use about a half inch seam allowance. Clip off the excess fur from the sides. Reach through the hole that you left at the bottom of the lining and pull the entire stocking right side out. Fold in the raw edges of the gap that you left open and then top stitch it closed. Press out all of the seams and curves and then push the lining into the stocking. And there you have it, your own Christmas stocking. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Stay safe out there, guys. Have fun!